Good morning, folks. I'm going to show Earth's North Pole momentarily, but in truth, the plasma dance on the North Pole of our star is a bit better looking. Last year, springtime heralded in a wave of polar rumbling, and I'm going to go ahead and say this was pretty far north, moderate start like last year. Heat wave in India? They'll take it actually after being the poster children for hail and cold records set this winter. Cyclone Imelda, still gaining power in the Indian Ocean and on a beeline west to the coast. As night falls in Australia, Antarctic chills making their way to New Zealand make themselves a bit more obvious. Some severe precipitation isolated in northwestern Australia and hopefully this is coming down a bit on New Zealand drought zones. Europe. Seeing mini lows punching off the bigger one off Nova Scotia's coastline, these keep it coming down in the south and continue driving blizzard conditions elsewhere in the region. Click the link to check your situation. Been showing the Pacific for days. Next cell is here. You see the warning zones and the big red L's at the low pressure system. It's massive, slightly unpredictable, just like the wind map. The threat areas seem to be changing every hour, so you must pay attention to your local forecasts. I'd also like to show you NOAA's new weather tool. Of course, it is linked for you below, got a 7 day window and all the metrics. After messing with this a bit, I found that I prefer the satellite imagery. We can get rid of some other things, totally up to you by the way. Want to know where it's going to rain or snow today? Check the green. You can also get a hazard map too, but I actually prefer their old one. Shifting to space weather, where we're sans a gamma burst in over 10 days. Bar toll is back, sort of. The readings appear normal, but I find it suspicious that other metrics have shrunk down to near invisibility. Apparently this is the first machine ever to be fixed by simply making the readings look smaller. We got two big active regions here, two headed for the limb out of sight. The big boy down south disappointed us by closing shop for flares when cresting into view, but now that Earth is directly connected there, we want zero activity, period. Still headed in are Beta, Gamma, Sneezy, and Doc. All still sleeping though, but with the magnetism to fire away if they decide to wake up. We've had no such luck this cycle though, and yes, we have avoided a mega solar blast, but we're also not getting the mid-size flaring Earth desperately needs. Ah, the umbral fields. Got my gong back last night. Central opening, not fully open yet. Kinda tough to call, even tougher with the field atop the STO AIA-193. Solar wind appears relatively benign, no major speed or density flux, but in the green at the bottom around 17 or 1800, the temperature of the plasma goes from 1000 to over 10,000 Kelvin in short order. And despite this little spike here, it does trail off quickly this morning. Nothing broken on this machine, 2.5 Hertz induction resonance from about 17 or 1800 to waning this morning. Per the past few videos, the moon has five conjunctions to make in the next three days. During that time, the solar wind stream from the last Earth-facing coronal hole will strike our planet. Watch continues through the 12th, eyes open. No fear at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.